Uh, first up, though, let's talk about that European summit coming up and, of course, that meeting yesterday the Prime Minister had uh, with President Zelensky of Ukraine. Uh, the, all the papers today pretty much have a picture of uh, those two men and their bromance hug on the uh, lawn in Chequers after uh, uh, Zelensky arrived by Chinook helicopter. Uh, Sir Gerald Howarth is a former uh, Conservative MP and Defence Minister and joins us now. Good morning to you, Sir Gerald. Good morning, Thank Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, I was going to say, you know, the Prime Minister's gone to I was going to Iceland uh, today, but, I mean, my mum's gone to Iceland. She will find that prices are going up an awful lot. And a lot of that is due to the Ukraine war. You know, what goes on uh, in Ukraine um, and, and the sanctions and the like have had a massive impact on, our, on prices of everything in this country. Um, but um, I, I'll come on to Ukraine in a moment. Um, Rishi Snack is, is going to tell the Council of Europe summit leaders' heads that the, we must unite to face down the threats at our borders. Now, he's not just talking about, you know, things like Russia. He's talking about immigration. He's talking about the mass migration, uh, mass uh, refugees that we are seeing from uh, war-torn countries, uh, countries hit uh, by economic uh, problems, uh, civil war and the like. Um, what do you make of what he's got to say? And do you think that the rest of Europe is listening? Well, first and foremost, I think he's absolutely right to address this issue. It is, for many people in this country, the number one issue. And the government uh, not only has uh, made it one of its five priorities, but it is, was a priority uh, at the 2019 general election when the uh, Conservative Party gained a massive mandate uh, from the people partly to address this issue. And he's also absolutely right that Europe must unite on this because we're not the only country which is badly affected by this wave of uh, people moving around the world. Italy has suffered, as we've seen on our television screens. Hungary was much criticised by the EU for doing the job that it was supposed to do, which was to protect the EU's borders. So we're all, and, and Germany has taken a, a huge number of uh, migrants. So we're not alone in this. What is, of course, um, uh, the, the real problem here, and that is that the European Convention on Human Rights was uh, drawn up in a wholly different era, in the aftermath of the Second World War, when six million Jews had been exterminated by uh, the Germans. And the resolve was then to try to ensure that that was never repeated in Europe, and hence the European uh, Con Convention on Human Rights was drawn up. That is now being used to deal with the legitimate concerns of sovereign governments to deal with a massive issue of great importance to the people. And yet nothing has been done to change the convention. That must be changed because people now can move around the world with such ease was never imaginable yeah. in 1950. And that's the thing, the world is very much changing. It's fascinating, even um, Germany, uh, under a left-wing government and uh, under Olaf Scholz, they are now looking at, uh, you know, in coalition with the Greens and others, uh, actually sort of you know, tackling the issues in terms of establishing more border control uh, for them. And because they've had such a massive influx of people, uh, one million from Ukraine, one million originally, of course, from Syria and elsewhere in 2015, they've had pretty much an open border policy. And funnily enough, the German people have gone, um, we're not sure about this anymore. We've seen that in Denmark in Sweden we see the rise of parties who are often you know, denigrated as oh, far-right Nazi affiliated parties often they're you know the people voting for those parties are, simple, or are saying well actually we, we just want someone to sort of acknowledge that we, we don't want you know a million extra people arriving in our country every year we don't we simply can't cope uh, as we can't cope have... with the people we've got we cannot cope with what we've got we uh, see house building everywhere we see a threat to our land to our our, our fields which grow Oh my food. God, Gerald, I can't think of anything more wrong than that. We don't have a threat to our land from house building. We've barely any of our countries built on. We need to be building more houses. Well, Julia, I'm afraid I don't agree. I, um, I'm a, a private pilot and have been uh, for half a century. And when I fly from Farnborough um, via the uh, via Tum Tumbridge Wells and then up St Nicks and up to the Dartford Crossing and up to here in Suffolk. Okay, all right, let's not have a tour of Britain. I see, I see these new housing estates growing up everywhere. Oh, how awful! Yes. People yes. getting to have a home to raise their families in. How terrible, yes. Gerald! When, yeah. when, when did you stop Julia. being a conservative? Julia. Julia, I am a conservative, you know that. You don't want uh, people to have a chance to own their own homes and build a life and, and have a this good quality a of life with their families. Julia, we do need to address 
the absolutely correct and natural aspirations of the British people to own their own homes. Then they but need to build more going, homes. But if you are going to import a million extra people a year, or 500,000 as we have been doing, that is uh, a, about six constituencies every year. No, I agree. I agree with you on that. But you're saying you know, we've already got this pressure on land. We don't have a pressure on land. On the contrary, we should be building more homes to ensure that the people who are already here have got homes and quality homes that they want to live in, not not you know high rise blocks, or, you know extra railway lines. We cannot, we cannot keep importing more people into this country. I agree with you. Adding to the pressure on housing, adding to the pressure on infrastructure, adding to pressure on our public services, not least on. Our medical services we simply cannot do okay. it and what Rishi uh, Sunak needs to do today is what he is planning to do namely to wake up the rest of Europe as we've been doing on Ukraine waking up the rest of Europe to ensure that we collectively deal with a threat not just to our service and so on but also to our way of life because yep. one of the interesting things Zola Braman said yesterday and she rejected multiculturalism. She said people coming here should embrace our values, embrace our customs, embrace our norms, and they should all speak English. And she was absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know anyone sensible who doesn't agree with that, I have to say. Let me get you on uh, Ukraine, though, as well. We had this uh, meeting with uh, uh, Zelensky doing a little sort of European tour to sort of shore up support for Ukraine. Um, we got that promise uh, yesterday from Rishi Sunak uh, after checkers that you know, the UK is going to send, well, before, actually, Ukraine, hundreds of kamikaze drones. got a 125-mile range. That's on top of those storm shadow missiles, which we agreed to send uh, last week. But crucially, Zelensky said he's very positive, he said, about creating what he called a jet coalition uk and french training uh jet fighter pilots but crucially trying to you know basically get the americans to agree to send those f-16 jets um, how crucial do you think that is well it's absolutely crucial i mean the sad thing about this whole uh, appalling business has been how we have prevaricated at each and every stage so we prevaricated as to whether we were going to support ukraine that is now a complete given we are going to support Ukraine. It's complete given that the Russians must be expelled and that Putin mustn't win. But if you remember, there was a question about whether we should send tanks or not. So we debated for six or seven or eight months whether we should send tanks. We are sending tanks. And Britain has led the way in all of this. But at each stage, uh, we've been navel-gazing as to whether this is the right thing to do or not. What is needed is a strategic rethink and a step change in our approach, uh, as uh, General Sir Richard uh, Sheriff said yesterday, uh, and as General Dannett, former head of the arm uh, of the British Army, said, uh, time is on Putin's side, and we have, uh, as General Sheriff said, we have options. Either we can just allow this to become a war of attrition, where uh, Ukraine is steadily flattened before our eyes, and the people of uh, Western Europe uh, uh, get f fed up with that. Their, their, constant uh, taxes having been yeah. uh, used to try to fight you get or we deal with it now and so i on your program julia i have now for the third time called for a coalition of the willing yeah. not a nato coalition a coalition of the willing and we should start with an air campaign to clear the air to make sure we have domination of the sky over ukraine to stop the russians uh flattening uh cities across Ukraine and then drive them out of the yeah, Donbass. We're, we're and, going to end up having to do this anyway. We've been, if, everything we get, we get to sort of months, months late, we should just be providing the stuff. No, look, we correct, can't provide it. We haven't got me, enough jets to provide any. One but. quick point. One of the interesting things which I picked up this morning, and you just mentioned it, these so-called kamikaze drones. Mm. I don't know anything about it, uh, although my son-in-law does happen to be the Minister for Defence Procurement, a job which I shadowed for six years in opposition. Yeah. But if we have uh, developed these as, if you like, urgent operation requirements, at which we are very good in this country, uh, producing military kit very quickly to address a specific need, we're far too slow in the rest of the procurement, but on this urgent operation requirements, we're very good. If it is the case that we are developing specifically for Ukraine, this new uh, uh, this new caliber of um, of unmanned weaponry i think this is very good news okay. in, and it demonstrates once again britain is in the lead in dealing with the real problem facing the free world 
We are the champions of freedom here for Ukraine, for Ukraine. It's not just right. Ukraine's problem, it's our problem too. Sir Gerald Howard, thanks so much, former Defence Minister.